not going to another. <laughs> this is it right here. Woo! Thank God for understanding, right? Thank you, Father. <clears throat> well, we've been um, really meditating on increasing our faith. And I know faith works by love and makes us officially join heirs. And um, <laughs> someone brought it out today in School of the Bible that uh, an heir of God gets something from God, but the join heir get everything from God. And I thought that was big time significant. Some people satisfied with anything from God, but the join heir want everything from God. So in order to get everything from him, we must be willing to suffer with him. And um, that suffering, the apostles said, <clears throat> is without the camp. In other words, we're following the Lord to Golgotha, Calvary, to the cross. And that's the only way we'll suffer legitimately by the work of the cross, that instrument of death. But there are a couple of um, notices that Jesus in the gospel made clear to us when he was talking to his disciples on different occasions. And um, I just want to read a couple of those, a few of those occasions. He says um, in Matthew Chapter 6, verse 30. Matthew six thirty, He says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and, to, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Now, he's talking to his disciples about what the Lord will do, even with little faith. Even with little faith. Even with little faith. I wonder how many of the believers today are yet wanting to believe God to clothe them. And then in Matthew chapter 8, verse 26, Matthew eight twenty-six, and he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Now, here, Jesus said to the disciples, uh, O ye of little faith, where? In the midst of a storm. Now, there's one thing to be uptight about being clothed. There's another thing to believe God would take care of us in a storm. And it doesn't take a lot of faith to believe God to take care of us in a storm. Because he took care of them in the storm. They just cried out. And he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. So little faith, he'll clothe us. In a storm, he'll protect us. He quiet in our storm. And then... Matthew 14, verse 31. Matthew chapter 14, verse 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? I, I said, ho, ho, okay, okay, I can deal with the food. Yeah, I can even deal with the storm because you're in the boat with me, Lord. 
But while I'm walking on water, while I am doing the supernatural in the midst of my walking on water, I'm yet a person with little faith. <laughs> now, how is that to be? Well, the way we have little faith while we're walking on the water is because our faith doesn't last. We're easily distracted. A distraction came to Peter when he saw the wind and the boisterous. Well, he saw that before he got out the boat. But the Lord gave him a word. And he climbed out of the boat and started walking on the water. But because he wasn't mature in faith, he was trying to overcome his waylays and waylay his fears. He was trying to overcome fear. And God would oftentimes do something to help us overcome fear. But just because he helps us to overcome fear in the moment doesn't mean we have mature faith. We can be doing a powerful thing. Never saw that like that before. But yet little faith. Because we are so easily distracted from what the Lord told us to do. He said, come. That's all he needed to hear. And he started walk on the water. Now, if that was not enough, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 8, Matthew 16, verse 8, he's talking to his disciples now. He's dealing with, they're in discipleship training. Chapter 16, verse 8, which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith. Now, remember, he, he spoke to Peter and said, O thou of little faith. But now he switched to ye rather than thou. Ye mean all y'all in today's hood vernacular. All y'all. O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Because ye have brought no bread. Now, it wasn't a matter of feeding my poor and no more. It's a matter of feeding the multitude. They were uptight about how they're going to feed thousands of people. And he said, oh, ye, all of y'all, little faith. I said, the Lord's going to help me get some words that I can use when I feel like I feel. Because my soul is still being delivered. So I don't want to use too much that sounds explicit. Because, oh, ye, a little faith. Y'all think I'm using profanity when I'm just using exclamations, not profanity. I'm exclaiming. So, from the food for oneself and clothes to quieting the storm to walking on the water, to feeding the multitudes. All of that is in the context of little faith. So the Lord is saying to me, okay, uh, you know, the brook dried up, okay? Every penny for a thousand dried up. And, and, and the Lord says, okay, it's, Time out for looking for pennies and claiming a thousand dollars. I said that the other day. Because I tried it out. I started looking for him. I said, to make sure he said no more. So I didn't see any around. 
And then the last time I was driving my car a couple days or so ago, and there was a penny there. And then I said, Lord, thank you anyway. Um, I won't uh, see that as a $1,000 because you've already told me it's time to go to another level. Oh, yeah, a little faith. And I'm just giving a little testimony in the midst of the message because in actuality, I was saying to myself now, I need a thousand dollars, you know, <laughs> real soon, like in a couple of days. And then we're steady writing checks to workers, craftsmen, and whatnot. And Wrote a few thousand last week, and everything is right down below the thousand mark. All the accounts. I'm saying, okay, all right. So, what should I do, Lord? Can't go out and pick up a thousand dollars. Still owe thousands. Then, boom. Taxes, bam, 5,000 here, 600 there, 500 there, you know. Not all the property is exempt, you know. And my name's on it. I said, okay, what, what, what we need here, what we need? So I, I started reading in First Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. And you've read it, you've heard it, you know that I preached it. It says, verse 10. 1 Thessalonians 3, verse 10. Night and day praying. Exceedingly. Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now, he said, now, son, I've let you slide for a good long time, maybe about 40 years or so. Now it's time for you to go to another level of praying exceedingly night and day. And not just praying night and day, but exceedingly. Praying with, with some sweat and some snot and some tears and some, some, you know. That's the way what is lacking in faith is going to be remedied. Oh, y'all <laughs> of little faith. Ye of little faith. And so you don't have to feel like I'm talking about you because he was talking to me, but he's including all of us. We're in this boat together, you know. I just happened to get out and start walking on some water and start to sink and cry it out. And so he says, night and day, praying exceedingly. Whenever you pray, no more calm prayers. No more silent night, holy night. All is calm and all is bright. Round your burdens and and whatever else that sound that song says. It's time out for Santa Claus. He's gone. No more pennies. I saw a picture. You might have seen it on on Facebook. This guy always putting some pretty provocative stuff there. He. <laughs> 
If he had Santa Claus sitting on the chimney of somebody he didn't like and he wasn't going down there, he was sitting on it like it was a toilet. <laughs> I said, who, would, who would have ever thought about the Santa Claus sitting on the chimney using it for his toilet but it's time to pray saints so you can start out at home <laughs> Praying fervently, exceedingly, effectually. And the Lord's going to do some magnanimous things. As a matter of fact, by the time he gets ready to write to this same church at Thessalonica in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, because he did pray exceedingly that he might see their face and perfect what is lacking in their faith. By the time he wrote them again, he says in chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, he says, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. So that exceeding type praying produced the exceeding growth in faith. Say so your faith is going to grow so, so tough, so profoundly, so exceedingly until I'm going to be able to do some things in you and through you and for you that all your faith is going to increase. Everybody's faith is going to increase. Everybody's faith is going to increase. And even those that don't think it's increasing, they'll get up and fake it. They'll get up and act like their faith is increasing. Because it's going to happen. And we've been given, we've been given notice. I've been given notice. And see, God doesn't pay me for not believing. He doesn't pay me for not believing. People who, who, who have, to, there's a paycheck not coming. You're going to have to believe God to put food on your table. So, your faith groweth exceedingly. And the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. That was what it was about, the text. Love is stronger than faith. Your faith grows exceedingly, however, but your charity or your love in action toward each other abounded. And that love factor abounding toward each other is greater than the faith that groweth exceedingly. And to me, that's that. That's what it's going to take to catch the, to bring the fish in, to, to, to clean the fish. We can catch a whole lot of fish, but can we clean them? It's going to take a whole lot of love for that. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God. In other words, God says what we're going to experience is not only an abounding faith, but an abounding love. And then people are going to be bragging about you everywhere they go. They're going to be bragging about you. And it said right there, ourselves glory in you in the churches of God. He says, everywhere I go, I talk about you because of your faith and because of your love. That's big time right there. Wow. And don't worry. It's for your patience and faith in all your persecutions 
and tribulations that ye endure. He says, this is what it's going to take to deal with all the persecutions and all of the tribulations that's coming our way. We're going to need an abundance of faith and an abundance of love. And that faith is in God and our love toward one another. We'll be able to handle all of the persecutions and all of the tribulation. We'll be able to endure all of it. We're not going to faint over any of it. We're going to roll on until Christ comes. And he's coming real soon because uh, he said, behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. Woo, to give every one of us according to what our works are at the time of his arrival. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? And blessed is the servant that is so found doing when his Lord returns. We want to be saying it and doing it. No excuses, none. Because he's already given us the protocol. He's already given us the easy uh, uh, one step program. And that's praying exceedingly night and day and all the rest of it will follow through. The faith will increase, the love will increase and people will be talking about it everywhere. And I think that that's all he had to say to me. That's all I can handle at time. So that's all I'm going to say to you because I don't want to cause you to faint before we get there in Jesus name.